Um, now, uh, Kate Leslie is going to come and speak to us now. We all know Kate. Uh, I don't think I need to introduce you at all, Kate. Uh, uh, but Kate, of course, Professor of Anaesthesia from Melbourne. Kate, immediate past president of the college. Kate, enormously active in research, in particular in uh, multi-centre clinical trials. And she's going to talk to us today about really quite a topical issue related to EEG. Thank you, Kate. Thank you very much, Guy. Um, I'm giving a very short presentation now about low BIS values and do they matter. So we've heard a bit from Jamie about, um, about how the EEG works and also how to, how to detect people who might be too lightly anaesthetised or awake during their operation. But this talk is about the other end of the spectrum. There have been a number of observational trials, that is trials where there's no intervention. They're looking at uh, BIS numbers and then they're looking at long-term outcomes. And the first one was from Terry Monk's group. Uh, in the mid-2000s, and what they showed was that patients having non-cardiac surgery were more likely to have died one year later if they had low BIS values. This was repeated by the Swedish group, Lindholm et al. Um, that was a bit of a longer follow-up, and also by us in the Be Aware trial patients, where we followed them up four and a half years later and showed that those with low BIS values were more likely to have died. The Be Unaware trial group from St. Louis uh, looked at their cardiac patients and their non-cardiac patients separately, and they showed that there was a reduction, um, that there was an increase in mortality in the cardiac patients, but not the non-cardiac patients. So overall, the signal from the observational studies is that persistent low BIS values during surgery are associated with a poorer outcome. Dan Sessler and his uh, group have looked at an extension of that, which is the triple low theory. And this was published recently in Anesthesiology. So what they did um, was at the Cleveland Clinic, they do about 90,000 surgeries a year. It's amazing. And they have a computerized uh, autonomic, uh, autonomic, automatic record keeping system. And what they did was they defined a reference range for, normal, for normality. So they showed that the median um, MAP, mean arterial pressure in their patients was 87, and that was the standard deviation, that the, uh, media, me, that the mean BIS was 46, and that the mean MAC was 5 uh, 0.56, which is actually quite low. I guess they have a tendency to give a lot of opioids. And anyone who had a value that was outside this standard deviation from the mean was classified as being abnormal. They then looked at 30-day mortality adjusted for age, sex, comorbidity and surgical complexity. And the results are over here. Here's the MAP, BIS and MAC. And we're interested in the lows. Patients who had a, a value more than one standard deviation below the mean. And here's the single lows. And you can see that the only single low that was associated with a worse outcome was a single low MAC. Sorry, uh, no, now I've got myself confused. Sorry, the only one that was, uh, so the BIS here, if you had a low BIS, that was the only thing that was wrong with you, that was associated with a better outcome. And if you had a, a low MAC, and that was the only low that you had, then that was associated with a worse outcome. Here's the double lows, so here's low MAP and low MAC and low BIS and low MAC and low MAP and low BIS. And you can see that apart from this combination here, they were all associated with the worst outcome. And then a triple low was associated with a relative risk of four. So the triple low, having a low MAC, a low BIS and a low MAP at the same time, was very significantly associated with 30-day mortality. The uh, editorial writers for this paper wondered if the triple low was detecting patients who were at increased, of, increased risk of mortality. Um, they wondered if hypotension is the stress test in patients with frailty demonstrated by anaesthetic sensitivity, that is a low MAC with a low BIS. And if the triple low is actually causal rather than just associated with the phenomenon, which of the elements matters is it the hypotension? Is it the burst suppression, which is not a physiological 
state, but a drug-induced state that may alter brain function permanently? Or is, is it both that matter? Tim Short and I wrote an opinion piece about this in Anesthesia and Analgesia and proposed the following model. And it all relates to this relative anesthetic overdose. And the amount of drug that, or, uh, that will cause an overdose in a patient is, is an individual thing. That's why we've used the word relative. And also it's uh, different in different people at different times. So if someone is over anesthetized, that may result in organ toxicity, uh, brain, heart, kidney, um, and it may result in organ hypoperfusion. Organ hypoperfusion can cause organ toxicity and probably uh, vice versa. And all of these things can, relate, can result in a low bis. If you give too much anaesthetic, if the brain is hypoperfused, or if it's being subject to a toxic stimulus. And all of these, these, these things definitely lead to death. Whether low bis leads to death as an independent factor or whether it leads to death because of its relationship with the other two factors is currently not known. But we think that this is highly likely to be just an epiphenomenon in, the, in this model. So what we're doing to sort this out is a study with, which we've named the BALANCE study. Uh, we're planning to randomise 6,600 patients who are elderly and at risk of mortality to a volatile based anaesthetic, general anaesthetic uh, lasting more than two hours with an intervention of either lowish bis or normal bis. And the primary outcome uh, variable is one year mortality. We've done a pilot study uh, in, in seven centres in New Zealand, Australia and Hong Kong. And here's some of the results. Here's the low bis group and the, the normal bis group. Um, and you can see the patients are relatively elderly, um, that the surgery is lasting just over two hours. You can see that we, we achieved separation between the two groups, and this is crucial to the, um, to the success of this trial. Um, it's relatively easy to anaesthetise people in this range. Um, it's much more difficult to anaesthetise people in this range because, as Jamie mentioned, every time the surgeon does something to the patient, the bis tends to shoot up. So you're standing there with your hand on the sevo vaporizer trying to get it right in this group. It's quite a challenge. It's good fun. You can see that this strategy results in less uh, anaesthetic being given to the patients in the uh, light group. Um, in this study, we asked the anaesthetist to defend a particular blood pressure that they thought represented adequate perfusion, and they were successful in doing that. And the slide's gone a bit funny, um, but this is a tantalising result. There were more complications in the deep group than the light group. Now, this is highly likely to be due to chance alone, given the very small numbers of patients in the group. And here's the... Uh, the the bis data, and you can see that uh, these, are the, these are the deep patients and these are the light patients. So we seem to be um, underachieving the goal somewhat in the light group, and we'll have to work on that in the study. So it's all about feasibility now with this trial. Can we do it? Well, we've, um, we've done it before, um, so that's a good sign. We've got a great group of um, centres all around Australia and New Zealand who are interested, and if, if your centre's not involved and you'd like to be part of the trial, please contact us. And um, we got some money from the New Zealand government, $1.2 million, so we're just waiting on NHMRC in Australia to see how we go. So. Um, I've talked about uh, this model and I've talked about our trial, which is called Balanced. So in summary, there's a consistent signal from observational studies that low bis values are associated with an increased risk of death. And there's obviously a complex interplay that we need to sort out. So in the interim, avoid hypotension and excessively deep anaesthesia and join our study. Thank you.